Today I'll be taking over Alabama and NCAA football, but this isn't your typical rebuild. Less than three years ago, they won it all versus Ohio State, but since then Georgia has taken the last two, and on top of that, they just lost to Texas at home. So there are some people saying Kirby Smart is overtaking Nick Saban, and that's why I'm giving myself five years to win it all three more times with Alabama before he inevitably retires at 75. And if Nick Saban could pull off this miraculous feat, he would retire with 10 national championships, but this is not going to be easy to do because Texas and Oklahoma are joining the SEC. The playoff will be expanding from four teams to 12. And from what we've seen, there's no future stud in this quarterback room. So I don't know how we're going to win it three times in a five-year span, but the clock is ticking as Nick Saban continues to age. And you know what? If I can't pull this off, I'll give away that Alabama football. It is signed by Bryce Young and one of my favorite pieces. But if I don't win three championships in five years, it will be given away to a random commenter on this video. With that on the line, I am ready to lock in. And I still think this first seasonable is salvageable, assuming that we're able to win out. I'll also be using the realistic fangs for mod, and with Nick Saban as our head coach, we should be able to get whoever we want. Four-star tackle Tommy Penniston was a plus 12 gym, and as a 90 overall, he might be the best offensive lineman in this class, but the most important player could be quarterback Bryson Carson, because this guy was scouted as a 94 overall, which is the highest I've ever seen on this game, and that could fix one of the few holes we have on this team, but he's from Iowa, and they have a sizable lead on us, so we're also going after athlete Jonu Reynolds, who could play quarterback as well. I think it'll be best if everybody visits against number 17 Ole Miss, because I'm not gonna lie, when I scroll through all these recruits, you'll see that we're losing a lot of battles. And Bryce and Carson locked us out, but we're gonna use open the door to break that. And that puts us less than a thousand points behind Iowa. If you've ever watched one of my rebuilds before, I can only jump into three games a season. And I think this one against Ole Miss is crucial. Every important player on our recruiting board is visiting this week, and we need to make sure they come here. But Jalen Milrow is already fumbling. And I better see no comments saying that NCAA football 14 isn't realistic in 2024. Unfortunately, by halftime, it was all tied up at 14. And due to the weather, it's been a defensive battle here on third and 16 we are going to clamp up Ole Miss and if we could score on this drive I would think that we'd be in a pretty good position I have the slant open Burton gets in so it seems like we're going to take down Jackson Dart and what was that for a fourth and five play call this was absolutely terrible but I'm not complaining because I think we can still sneak into the playoffs and it's kind of crazy we're already back to being ranked in the top four recruiting wise with everybody visiting we landed seven prospects including Tommy Penniston and we might not have been able to land Bryson Carson yet but we did jump Iowa for the lead we do need a kicker though and Cam Hubble came in as a plus 31 gym so I'm hoping we can land the two-star out of Oklahoma since ours is a senior. Our schedule gets harder as the year goes on so I'm gonna have to sim against Texas A&M where we win and since that Bryce Young football's on the line this is the one time I'm okay with my Wildcats losing. Kentucky's more known for basketball anyways and we're sitting atop our division but each time I simulate I get nervous because even Arkansas could beat us they're very good it was close and I gotta give credit to Jalen Milrow for kind of turning it around. If we're gonna make the playoffs though we need some of these teams above us to lose. And there is no way that we just landed him. Look on the board. Bryson Carson has committed. And I'm not sure what caused such a massive swing. But now we have the best prospect I've ever gotten. He's literally going to have 98 throw accuracy as a freshman. And this matchup against Tennessee is college game day. So I think this is an important one for us to hop into. Unfortunately for Tennessee, the downpour gives us a massive advantage. And throughout this entire first half, we've just pounded the ball down their throat. We are stuck on a third and goal though. And I'm going to try to thread the needle with Jalen Milrow. It's going to go straight to the cornerback and we're going to tackle him in the end zone. I don't think he realized it at the time, but he caught this at the one yard line. So even though we didn't score a touchdown there, we forced the safety and what a brutal first half for Tennessee. They only have 11 total yards of offense. And at this point, I just feel bad for Joe Milton. He is not handling the weather very well. It turns out that that one early loss to Texas isn't going to ruin the season, but something to keep an eye on is starting halfback Jace McClellan's health. Going into week 11, we're ranked third in the country, but LSU really fell off after losing to Florida State. And since they're four and five, I'm not worried about simming this at all, though we barely won. I do want to play the Auburn game, so I am going to sim against Mississippi State, and we just lost in overtime. And since it's only a four-team playoff in this first season, we might not make it. We were dominating, and everything was going so well for us, but no, you've got to be kidding. We did not just lose to Missouri of all teams as well. It looks like we had way more total yards than them, but Jalen Milrow didn't throw for a single touchdown, and why did Roydell Williams get 49 carries? I don't know what's going on over here in Alabama, but we're going to go to a passing offense. And since with that result, we're eliminated from any postseason game, I guess we'll just be headed on into year number two. The Sim did not favor us well. And now I have four seasons to win three national championships. And it sucks this is the last four-team playoff because winning the 12-team one's going to be even harder. Blake Corm ended up winning the Heisman, and our bowl game is against Clemson. They're a young team that we might end up running into in the playoffs in the future. But assuming we recover this onside kick, we're going to win the Citrus Bowl, and you've got to be kidding me. Everything is just falling apart for us. They're dusting us 
with that corner route. Oh my gosh, make a tackle. I can't believe how terribly this season is ending. And let's just say that I am going to go for the two-point conversion. I think being aggressive can pay off. The drag route isn't going to get open, so I'll just take off with Jalen Milrow instead. And I accidentally sim the first play of Clemson's drive, but evidently Cade Klubnick threw an interception. So at least that's a decent ending to what was a pretty brutal year. Jalen Milrow wasn't the best, but Roydell Williams dominated. And I'm hoping that Malik Benson returns for his senior year. As for the playoffs, the top two seeds made the championship, and there's no way that Wisconsin's about to win it all. Braylon Allen has literally just dominated, and here he's probably going to go for another touchdown. So somehow the Badgers are going to do it, but this would have been such an easy year for us to win it all. It looks like we hired Barry Odom from Nevada as our new defensive coordinator, and I'm not sure why because they're terrible in real life, but this player's leaving screen is massive, because not only are you going to see that we're losing all these players to the NFL in graduation, but 81 overall freshman Shaz Preston and Ty Simpson are both transferring out. On top of that, I'm trying to convince our best juniors to stay, but they want to leave. And losing Kool-Aid McKinstry, our 98 overall corner, is going to be tough. We should be able to wrap up this recruiting class with three more guys. And I was right as all of them committed, which ended up giving us the number one class in the country. I'm so excited to see how Bryson Carson does, but there's also a lot of other really good freshmen we were able to get. And since our cornerback room is looking so weak, it's a really good thing that we got 86 overall athlete Devin Emerson. The most important offseason stage is training results, though. And Jalen Milrow jumped up to a 95 overall, so we might have a quarterback battle. Besides him, other players that progressed really well are Justin Jefferson and Caleb Downs. But if I'm being honest, for Alabama, this roster isn't the best. And we'll see how things go now that Texas and Oklahoma have joined the SEC. I'm not sure why we're starting the year with six conference games, but this is going to be a brutal slate. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I still have to start the freshman, even though he's one overall worse. Jalen Milrow just didn't get it done last year. And if we're going to win three championships in four years, we have very little room for error. Now, you might think that we don't have that many team needs at Alabama, but in a five-year span, we're going to lose a lot of the talent we have, so we have to continue to recruit. And if you were wondering how lucky I got last year, just know that about every dude I'm scouting is busting. What I am going to do, though, is test out InstaCommit by just offering a scholarship to literally every player on our board, and there's a 20% chance we get them, which is all thanks to Nick Saban's own ability, the Saban Factor. The only downside is I've never scouted any of these five guys before, but Joshua Garcia is going to end up being pretty good, and it seems like the rest of them are just going to bust. At the top of the board, there's really only four guys that I'm hoping we're able to land, and Jamari Hubbard might be 5'7", but he's a five-star recruit with 94 speed. Obviously, if we lose any of these first few, we're going to be in a lot of trouble, and we're not going to have a good week for visits this year because the only good matchup would be against Florida, so we'll schedule them for Missouri. And if we lose to the Tigers again this season, I'm going to lose my mind. I do have bad injury news, though, as our starting free safety is out for the season, and Bryson Carson has strained his knee, so we have to use Jalen Milrow, who couldn't beat Missouri last season, but he does this year. This time, he actually threw for three touchdowns, but we still had over 40 total carries, and all I can hope is we play that well again at number three Georgia this week. We did land quite a few players from the visit week against Missouri, though, and that includes Javante Norman and Ty Neal Yergin, who has 93-man coverage, but he could also play wide receiver. I'm sure that all eyes are on Sanford Stadium right now, though, because we are taking on the number three team in the country, and Jalen Milrow is still out there, which is not good. I was really excited to play with Bryson Carson, but the freshman is injured, it's raining hard, and this could be a rough game. The only positive takeaway from this first drive is Cam Hubble, our freshman kicker, has a strong leg. And approaching halftime, it's all tied up at 10. I'm hoping we score a touchdown here, but I had no time. I mean, left tackle Caden Proctor literally couldn't have given less effort here, and I almost want to bench him just for that because we have to settle for three. Let's just say that we could have really used a touchdown there because ever since then, we haven't been able to score, but I think I have the tight end over the middle and he's going to miss the tackler. I'm going to be able to go all the way down to the 15. And from there, we'd punch it in a few plays later. I don't know why Gunner Stockton is Georgia's starting quarterback in this game, but he is. And we've gotten them to a massive fourth and nine where all we need to do is hold them, which we do. One first down seals it, and this would be a massive result for us. But the Georgia run defense can be tough. It looks like we have a lane on the outside. I should not have done a juke move there, and we did not just fumble the football. You've got to be joking. They've picked this up. They're going to take it back to the crib. I'm so done. I got a little bit too cocky. I threw in a juke move I really shouldn't have. Now we have to somehow score, and what a juke move that was by Law himself. I think we'll end up being all right, but I have to make sure I continue to make the right 
read and I just knew it. I knew it the second it left Jalen Milrow's hands. They're going to score another touchdown. And I'm going to be honest, I don't want to talk about it at all. The second Bryson Carson is back from injury, Jalen Milrow's getting benched. But of course, we have to play number four Oklahoma next. And this team's coming off a national championship appearance. We've got to figure out how to bounce back though. And I don't understand how Bryson Carson's still injured. It was supposed to be like a one or two week thing, but instead we have to stick with Jalen Milrow and he does shed a couple tackles there before pitching it, which leads to a touchdown. The key to having success with him is to keep it on the ground because he's like a running back and you know what approaching halftime we are doing pretty well here on third and one we're going to go with a little bit of play action switch it up and they were not ready for the pass at all we're doing everything that we need to and i haven't been very impressed with jackson arnold he is going to try to escape the pocket and shed a tackle there so maybe i shouldn't have said anything but he's made our defense look pretty good and they sniffed that out perfectly if we take our three we go up by two possessions but i want to go up by three and that was a bad decision but i don't regret it because unless oklahoma pulls off a miracle we're gonna win they've gotten down to the goal line so we got to be careful and that is going to be an interception from arnold to arnold so we have officially bounced back and we should easily make the 12 team playoff that result alone catapults us right back into the top seven and we only have a few more tough games left on our schedule as for recruiting we're still trailing on all three of our top targets but i'm confident that over time we're able to land them we just throttled vanderbilt and it's all because bryson carson has finally returned i am gonna trust the freshman to take down the reigning national champions and he does so I'm pumped to see what he can do in his few years at Alabama, and we're also going to take down Tennessee. Up to this point, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get a first round bye, but we're about to play Western Kentucky, and I have to hop into this because I've set a lot of recruits to visit for this game. Winning this might be able to land us that 5'7", 5-star halfback, and what a start from Bryson Carson. I've never used a recruit that's this good. I don't even know if I've ever used a quarterback that's this good, but with 98 throw accuracy, this guy literally doesn't miss unless I just stink, which I do. Anyways, we exposed Western Kentucky so there's a chance we won't see them in the playoffs. But if they went out, I think they still deserve to make it. I probably shouldn't have jumped into this one, but I felt like it was important, and I love to see that yellow text on my screen. If you can't read, we got Jamari Hubbard, the 5'7 halfback, to commit, but Livingston Smith chose to go to Michigan State. I think he's really going to regret that decision, but we also have a lead on the final three players on our board, and that includes five-star safety Dustin Pointer, who's a 90 overall. Since I can't jump into any more games, though, I have no choice but to sim to the conference championship, and this one against Florida could end up being crushing. We are going to lose by 10, so we legitimately might not make the playoffs. This new SEC is so tough as we finished third in our division, but even though we didn't make a conference championship game, we are still inside the top 10. And to be honest, in the future, we might be able to get in with three losses. I'm not sure I've ever seen all five Heisman finalists being running backs, but unfortunately, Justice Haynes didn't do enough to be in that conversation. And we did have a 1,000 yard receiver in Ja'Cory Brooks, but the main thing I want to point out is Bryson Carson going 20 touchdowns and two interceptions in his first season. This guy's already up to a 97. It literally isn't fair. And I'm so excited to get into this 12-team college football playoff. Our opening round matchup is against Kansas. And I don't want to disrespect them because they could upset us, but they do not belong here. I honestly just feel bad for Jalen Daniels because this is such a tough matchup for him. And to end the first half, we should be able to go up 28-3. to But Bryson Carson didn't get the ball out in time there, so he's going to need to do it on this play. And that was almost picked. The worst part is the clock also hit zero. But in the end, we just run out most of the second half and not much really happened. 97 overall Jalen Daniels wasn't even able to throw for over 100 yards, so I'm feeling extremely confident going into the quarterfinals, and it is here where we're going to have to take on Drake May. The Tar Heels have three losses though, so I'm not sure why they're ranked above us, and it would have been nice to get that first round by, but now we just have to go out and prove that we're the better team. There's a decent chance that this is a very high scoring game. Drake May is going to throw an interception, Des Ricks comes away with it, he breaks a tackle, and he should be able to take this back to the house. I literally couldn't have asked for a more perfect start. We are doing very well against North Carolina. And I swear, Bryson Carson is a cheat code. We have flown down the field and he is just going to escape the pocket to dive into the end zone himself. It's been a bit of a wild ending to this first half. I might as well just throw up a 50-50 ball, see what can happen. And we come down with it. Ja'Cory Brooks has been our best wide receiver, but Drake May opened up the third quarter by scoring a touchdown. And this is going exactly how I thought it would. It is a shootout back and forth, but I'm loving every second of it. And with two minutes left. If we can finish off this drive, we're going to have a two possession lead. Of all the North Carolina receivers, Tez Walker's been the hardest one to stop. He's actually eligible on this game. And I'd like to think that we're in a pretty solid position, but Drake May has been cooking us. He's going to throw on the run, avoiding the sack. So the Tar Heels are not out of it. They could always go for the onside kick and then beat us here on third and goal, though. We're going to get the sack, force the fumble, and we should be moving on to the semifinals. But JJ Jones just snuck behind us. I have seen bad bounces go the other team's way. Thank goodness Prentice is able to hold on. 
one, and I'm curious who we're gonna play next. It'll be either Penn State or UCLA, and I'm actually terrified of facing off against Drew Aller because Penn State's been really good. He literally played almost a perfect game, and it doesn't make me happy to see that Georgia's still in it as well. If we're gonna win three titles in the next four years, though, this is a pretty good chance, and I'll be playing it very aggressively going forward on fourth and three, which is going to work out. I'm telling you, Ja'Cory Brooks is amazing, and I've also been pretty happy with our defense so far. By midway through the third quarter, I'm hoping that we're able to get another touchdown on this drive. I don't see anything open, and I should not have ran backwards there. Bryson Carson is a good quarterback, but he's no Jordan Travis, and here on third and 13, can we hold Penn State again? They go with the halfback screen. We're going to get the hit on Nick Singleton. Hopefully, we're able to just punch this one in, and I think we've put ourselves in a position where Penn State would really struggle to come back. One of the reasons we've done so well is Drew Aller's been on and off the field, but I just missed that tackle. Nick Singleton scores, and yes, we're kind of blessed that he broke his tailbone. All we really need is one first down, and that will seal the game, and I think it's best if we try to pass it on third and eight. I have the drag coming underneath. They covered it really well, though, so we're going to attempt a 56-yard field goal, and it is going to be far enough. Our freshman kicker is amazing, but Penn State won't go away. They scored a touchdown, and they're not going to get the two-pointer. This tackle on Nick Singleton was so clutch, and we just have to hold on to this ball, boys. Come on, that goes right into our arms. We have made it to the national championship, and Justice Haynes has been going crazy. But before we get into the rest of the rebuild, I'm going to rebuild another team on Football Head Coach, today's video sponsor. I just started a new account, so my starting team isn't the best at a 60 overall, but to fix that, I'm going to open up some packs before I jump into my first game, and there's a 34% chance I'll pull a flashback in this one. My first pack is coming in at an 85 overall. It's not going to be a flashback player, though. It's Creed Humphrey, and Football Head Coach is an official NFLPA game with simulated matches, so all these players are real. I've been waiting forever, but there is the flashback animation. The rating's going to be an 84, and it looks like he is going to be a wide receiver. It is Matthew Slater. And after ripping through a few more packs after that, my team is up to an 82 overall. Using the tactic screen, I think it's best if we rush more since we have Jalen Hurts at quarterback. And now it's time to hop into a quick match. I have high expectations for this team, and Jalen Hurts is going to throw for a touchdown. In the end, we won by seven points, and then I did a player trade challenge, which I somehow pulled Lamar Jackson out of. I genuinely enjoy playing this game, and if you want to join me on Football Head Coach, you can download it by using this QR code or the first link in the description, and hopefully this Alabama rebuild ends as well as that one did. No matter what happens, our opponent will be an SEC school, but it looks like Georgia's about to lose, and it'll all come down to this one final play where they went with a wide receiver screen. Luckily for them, that only took three seconds, so they're now going to have one final chance, and it was another short pass, so Texas A&M has actually done something right. This year, their only two losses have come at Texas and at FAU, so we know that this is going to be a very tough game, but the fact that they lost to FAU is very fitting for the Aggies. Here on first and 10, I'm going to fumble the football, and so far, they are playing extremely well. Hopefully, we can stop them on the goal line, but instead, we let Johnny Manziel's record get broken, and with two minutes left in the second quarter, we are down by 21. This is a lot of trouble. I do like this play call, though. I'm going to go with it. We have the crossing route over the middle, and that was beautifully delivered to Prentice, who breaks free, so we have a little bit of life, and the question will be, can we stop this Texas A&M offense? They've been very solid, but we forced them to punt it back to us with about a minute left, and you know what? I'm just going to throw up a 50-50 ball. Hope that Ja'Cory Brooks is faster, and why did he not lay out for this football? It makes no sense, but at least we're still driving. Oh, and now he wants to make amazing catches. I mean, if we could still end the half with a touchdown, I guess I can't complain. I think we're going to have somebody open. The wheel route is open, and after leading the team in receiving yards last season, we finally have a Malik Benson sighting. Well, 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 it looks like Texas A&M is blowing their lead. That is man-to-man -man coverage, and Gilbert just made a beautiful play on the ball. We were about to tie it up. Someone please make a tackle on him. Bring him down. And I'm so frustrated because we just lost so much momentum. Here on third and three, I don't know what they're going to try to go with. They take the flat. We're going to hit him short. So at least Texas A&M only gets a field goal. But we have got to respond back. And this is man-to-man -man coverage. Kobe Prentice toasted his guy. But because he couldn't get the throw out in time, we're going to have to settle for 3-2. Now we do have them on a third and 19 here. I just have to hope that nobody beats their man. And Evan Stewart is going to just be brought down. So much is riding on this one drive. I don't see anything open. Their man-to-man -man coverage has been giving us issues all day. Somehow the referee fell down. Please slide. We have to remember Bryson Carson's only a freshman, but I feel like he's done his best. And all Texas A&M needs is a field goal to win. But we just got a monster sack. And on the next play, they went with a halfback draw. If you all thought Nick Saban was going to lose the championship, especially the Jimbo Fisher, you're out your mind. Because with how good our kicker is, we're practically already in field goal range. And we're just going to keep getting closer. Freshman Cam Hubble is out there and he drills it down the middle. So in year two, we win our first of three national championships. And it feels good, but hopefully there's a lot more to come. If Bryson Carson can do this as a freshman, 
freshman. Imagine what he'll do as a junior. And Nick Saban just broke his own record. As for players leaving, we're only losing 10 of them as seven of them are down here. And then three of our juniors are declaring early, including Jalen Milrow. I don't know how he was a first round pick as a backup, but evidently someone saw the potential in him. And to make sure we get Dunter Pointer, I'm putting 10,000 points on him. That was all it took to land him, but we didn't have the best class as Penn State topped us. And I guess our best player was a kicker that's going to be moved to punter, so it's a bit understandable. What always changes everything, though, is these off-season training results. And look at Kendrick Law shooting up to a 97. Bryson Carson is also already a 99. And our three starting defensive linemen are all above a 93. All I can say is it's a good thing we have them because this schedule is brutal with four top seven teams on it. Just like the recruiting class rankings were at number two, but Penn State's above us. And it's because they somehow convinced Drew Aller to come back for his senior year. Like always, the SEC is going to be brutal with five top 10 teams, but we are 99 overall and this is a tough first matchup. As for recruiting, I feel like I got pretty lucky because every single player I scouted seemed to be a gym. I'm also going to be seeing if I can get any players to insta commit. I have 17 lined up. We already have two and Curtis Thompson did as well and Peter Coleman. What is going on? In the end, we didn't get anybody else, but 4 of 17 is still better than 20%. And at the top of the recruiting board, I guess our main targets are these linemen and Ari Baguette. If we're going to win two championships in the next three years, we're going to need some serious depth. And I can't believe the SEC hit us with the national championship rematch in week one, but we are going to throw it to the freshman and somehow he got out of there. He might be 5'7", but he is like 97 speed and we need to make sure that we change his number for future weeks. But he's already got shin splints, so size does matter. And I guess we're going to have to score a touchdown without him. I wanted to get him a rushing touchdown, but we're just going to run on in. And Kendrick Law really just destroyed that safety. Midway through the second quarter, I think Texas a and finally going to score. But even though they did, I would like to end the first half with a touchdown or something. And that pass to Kendrick Law is tipped and intercepted. That passing window was only going to be there if we let him more upfield. And it's my fault that as the game went on, it has stayed this close. But if we could get a first down, we would end the game and look at Hubbard go. He did not just pull that off. Jamari Hubbard is the future of this running back room. And I thought we were going to have to settle for three where Texas A&M would have a chance to win with a touchdown. But instead, we went up two possessions so they can only get it within seven here. And they'd have to recover this onside kick, but they're going to sail it out of bounds. What a start to season number three to beat the same team that we just took down in the national championship. And Jamari Hubbard is going to be so much fun. All we need is for him to stay healthy. And Penn State's no longer even in the top 10 as they lost to Temple. Our big visit week this year is going to be against number two, Georgia. And I got to say, rebuilds when you start with such a good team are so much more fun. I know for a fact that every year we're going to be contending for making a playoff spot, but as I was just happily talking to you all, I noticed that we lost to Missouri again. For some reason, Tyler Buckner was playing and he threw four interceptions, but we have nobody on the injury report, so I'm going to help this team bounce back at South Carolina. We've lost to Missouri twice now in the span of three years, so I need to start paying more attention to that game. And the good thing with the 12-team playoff is that loss isn't season-ending for us, but I think we're going to struggle a bit. Haynes should not be in the game right now, and the fact that he is lets me know that Jamari Hubbard is hurt for three weeks with back spasms. This team is better than the one that just won it all, but we are struggling against South Carolina, and we can't be dropping that. I'm gonna go back to the slant and just hope that it works this time, which it does, but with two minutes left, South Carolina has the ball, and we're only up by three. I'm not gonna be able to get over to that pass, but we have forced a fourth and seven, so I can only hope for the best. They're gonna take their flat, and we're gonna hit them hard. I'm a bit concerned for how this team's gonna do in sim now, because I can only jump into one more regular season game this year, and here on third and seven, you know what? I'm going to take the check down and we're going to end it all. We got just enough to get the first down and it's not pretty, but we're going to beat South Carolina. And Justice Haynes has 15 rushes for 25 yards. He was so good in the playoffs last year, but his average yards per carry has dropped by almost two. And until Jamari Hubbard's back from injury, I'm going to start Richard Young. At least we've been able to continue to land these high overall offensive linemen. And if we somehow managed to bag 91 guard James Watts, that would be insane. Against Chattanooga, we're 36 overalls higher. So if we don't win by more than 40, I'm going to be very concerned. We only won by 30. And poor Vanderbilt is 0-5, so they are not having a good time in this dynasty. Remember, everybody is getting scheduled to visit against Georgia. And right now, not only are they the number one team in the country, but they're also the number one team in the SEC East. With all of these five stars on a visit, we have no choice but to play this game. And afterwards, we'll just have to sim to the postseason. If we can win, I'd feel confident about having a guaranteed spot in the playoff. But if we can't, then I have to start questioning what happens when I sim the rest of the year. I would assume we probably lose one more. And with Hubbard back from injury, I feel confident going for it on this fourth and three. Thankfully, we are going to pick it up with Carson and he's going to try to juke some people out. I never changed Mr. Jamari Hubbard's number, so maybe he just sticks with it. He's unique and he is so much faster than everybody else. Just by the way he's built, he doesn't even look like he's 5'7". He has a lot of muscle on him, but he is laying on the ground injured. And that's the problem, having a guy that doesn't have much size like him. Here on fourth and three, we are going to pick it up, but I can tell you
you right now that this one is going to come down to the wire. 99 throw accuracy evidently doesn't mean too much. And now Tyler Buckner is out there. So we don't even have our starting quarterback, though we do have somebody wide open in the end zone. And it's Javante Norman, the freshman wide receiver. The issue is George is going to score again. And I have no idea if we're going to be able to get it done. Here on third down, I am not able to get the ball out in time. So I hate to do this, but the smart decision is probably to just punt the ball back to Georgia. And let's just say I'm really starting to wish that I went for it. No matter what happens, I think they're in field goal range. I am going to send a blitz and they drop it. But unfortunately, they're going to take their three and it's far enough. I cannot believe the Bulldogs have gotten the best of us again, but there's only so much we can do. There's about a minute remaining. Young is going to get open out of the backfield. But the real question is, will we be able to recover the onside kick if we score? And I think we know the answer. The odds are not in our favor, but we're going to give it a go and the Bulldogs are going to recover. So that might be the end of season three for us. Brock Vandegrift needs to go ahead and graduate already. And because we lost during our visit week, almost none of these players committed. But we did land wide receiver Ari Baggett, who was supposed to be one of our main targets. Going into week nine, we're ranked down here at number 11. And we still have to play at Miami and at Florida, which is not going to be easy. Against Tennessee, we at least win. But I might as well just sim to the end of the season and hope for the best into conference championship week against Miami. We win by seven. So there is some hope and we should always beat Louisiana Monroe. The pivotal match is coming up though. And Florida has been very good in this dynasty file on the road at their place we get blown out and that might be the end of season three no playoffs for us most likely well going into conference championship week we're sitting at number 13 and like i said it would it all came back to that one game against georgia i don't have much hope now so i'm just gonna sim and kansas state's freshman quarterback won the heisman it is time for the moment of truth though where are we standing in the college football playoff rankings our points are going to put us at number 12 i don't know what we did to be above north carolina or notre dame especially because they only have one loss and it was to navy but that sec bias is coming in strong and somehow we're favored against five seeded Georgia. It's really depressing to see that Bryson Carson regressed, but at least when he's healthy, we have a bright spot in Jamari Hubbard and senior Kendrick Law wants to go out with a bang. Considering we just snuck into the playoffs, I don't think our odds are great, but I will say the team has had a little bit more time to gel, so I'm hoping that can make a positive difference. What a catch. I literally just threw this up hoping for the best and Kendrick Law somehow got his feet in. So that put us off to a hot start and with a few minutes left in the first half, we are gonna go up 21 to three if we can get in. I thought Jamari Hubbard was about to pull it off, but he got caught and thanks a lot for blocking here, 57. It's probably best if I just go right back to Kendrick Law. And I guess if anybody's gonna carry us through the playoffs, it would be him. I probably shouldn't be going for this on fourth and goal, but I'm playing very aggressive and we are going to get it. But Georgia scored pretty quickly, so we have to respond back again. And on fourth and four, Isaiah Bond is wide open. This is exactly how the offense should have been playing all year. They're gonna take their check down, but we have them on a fourth and two and I did run commit, but they passed it instead. It didn't take us much longer to get them to another fourth and 10. This time I'm hoping we get the stop. I usered that all day with Thomas and that is game. We're going to knock out Georgia. I cannot believe that we actually were able to win that, but Bryson Carson played amazing and Brock Vandegrift did not. So he's going out. Sorry. Next up is going to be Ohio State though. And we have to do well because us and Oklahoma are the only SEC schools remaining. Last year, we made a run to the championship so we could do it again. And on our first drive, we should finish it with a touchdown. Kyle McCord has also had a lot of time to develop though. So we are going to have to face off against him. And I think holding them to three there is a big deal. It's definitely been a very defensive matchup here on third and 17. I'm going to get the ball out in time, but it's going to be intercepted. And that is not how I want to end the first half. Seven to six is a brutal score for a quarterfinal matchup. We need to figure out our offense in the second half. And hopefully Ohio State doesn't first as we have them on a third and goal where they go with the halfback screen. Ricks is out there and they cut around. Evan Pryor's vision there just gave us so many issues and we have got to respond back. I went with the play action here. The block got picked up and look at Kendrick Law getting open. It has been a tough battle, but we should be able to punch it in. And with two minutes left, I'm hoping that we're about to score the game tying touchdown. What it's going to come down to is whether or not we can get a stop on the Buckeyes. And let's just say that that is not looking very likely. Kyle McCord had a couple of big passes and they just trucked us there. Please get the stop. And that's great and all, but we're going down by three. We do have a 99 overall quarterback for a reason. And on this wheel route, we are going to have Bond wide open. So now I'm starting to feel confident because we should already be in field goal range. I don't see anything open though. Please just throw it away. And here on third and 10, I'm going with the play action. Why did a rusher just get in? Please run around and just throw it off balance. Okay, we've picked up the first, but there's a flag. Apparently there was somehow offensive pass interference. So it's third and 20 and I'm never calling another play like that again. I'm going to take the curl and we can't get out of bounds. And I don't think we're going to get back to the line of scrimmage. I wasn't even thinking. I just didn't want to take a sack there. And I don't think we're going to win three championships in five seasons. It's crazy to think about, but we could have definitely made it here and then beaten Pitt. But instead, Ohio State's going to thrash them winning by 26. And this feels like a really big missed opportunity. There's a solid chance that that result is the reason a lot of these players are leaving for the NFL early. 
early. And look how many seniors we're losing. We are in a lot of trouble. I'm going to do my best to convince the second and third round picks to stay, which won't be too hard. But these first round guys are gone for good. And we also have a left end transferring out. That could end up being the best roster that we have throughout this entire rebuild. And I hate to not go after tight end Deontay Lewis, but we really need to land these three guys. Unfortunately, it looks like we've lost to the Buckeyes again. And this time we finish with the number three class in the country behind Texas A&M and Michigan. I think there's a lot of talent in here, but we have definitely had better. This is probably the most important offseason yet. And so far, I think these results are looking pretty good as a ton of players are above a 90 overall. Our wide receiver room could definitely be a lot better. But when scrolling through our defense, I don't see a player that is under like an 89 overall that will be starting. So we are in a very solid position for this season. Our schedule is going to be tough just like last year, but I'm going to play the Missouri game. And even though we're a 99 overall team again, we're ranked fifth to start the year. One thing that's changing is we're going to a full air raid offense. And the only positions we really need is maybe another quarterback and a tight end. Due to that, recruiting is not going to be a main focus, but we just got an insta commit. And this 6'6 five-star linebacker is insane. When Bryson Carson graduates early, one of these two could be our starter next year. And last year we played against Texas A&M. So this year I'm going to sim it, which was the right choice. I cannot believe how well Bryson Carson played. And for like the third or fourth time in this video, we just need to take down my Wildcats, which we do. One thing I noticed on the recruiting board was Nate Parham locked us out. So what I'm going to do is open the door. And now that we're back within about 400, I'm going to schedule him for a visit against Missouri. They're in the top 10 right now. So we need to go out and win this game. And look at that. Bryson Carson is in the Heisman race because he's thrown for 943 yards and nine touchdowns through two weeks. Missouri might have the number one offense, but we have the home field advantage and the number one quarterback in the country. I was making this read no matter what, so I'm glad he delivered the throw, but the ref is challenging the catch. And I'm not sure why, because the ball is never loose. Obviously the touchdown ended up standing, but with two minutes left, we are down to Missouri by 10 points and they're going to get the sack. I don't understand how things went so wrong, but we're going to have somebody deep and that's a great throw. But if it was a little bit better, Ari Baguette would have been able to take that one to the house without having to fall down. It's a freshman mistake, but we are not out of this game and we always lose to Missouri and there's the interception. I knew it was coming. I was trying to have a little bit of hope, but for some reason, the Tigers are a kryptonite and out of frustration, I'm just going to sim to the Georgia game, but I just noticed that they were not ranked. If the Bulldogs aren't good this season, that makes my life 10 times easier and we've won back-to-back -back games, so surely we would never lose to Vanderbilt. Midway through the season, Missouri's still undefeated and we're sitting down here at number seven, but right now we're tied at the top of our division with Kentucky and I'm genuinely not worried about beating the Bulldogs. I'm just going to go ahead and sim and we win by 10. Somehow throughout the course of the season, we fell way behind on Brett Petridge, but we did land quarterback Robert Shuck, so we'll have him next year. I still don't know how we lost to Missouri, but I'm so confident in simming with this team. And against Troy, if we didn't take care of business here, I would have lost my mind. We're eight and one, so you'd think we'd be a playoff lock. And unless we just blow it, we have won our division in the SEC. But this week we have to take on Notre Dame. And if Bryson Carson's going to win the Heisman, he has to play better. This season, he's somehow already thrown for almost 4,000 passing yards and 44 touchdowns. And that's only through nine games so far. He has been on a tear more than I've ever seen before in Sim. And on this first drive, I do want to try to bomb them with that wheel route. I think we have the speed at wide receiver and we are going to moss them anyway if we don't. Giovante Norman has been a fantastic addition for us. And to be honest, at least on offense, it feels like I'm playing with a super team. It's a little rough defensively sometimes, but when you score on almost every drive, it doesn't matter too much. And in the end, this one wasn't even much of a battle. Now we did just get toasted right there, but that's okay. Because due to Kenny Minchie's two interceptions, we'd still go on to win by 14 points. And Young is just shedding off tackles right now. With two games left, I'd love to say that we're guaranteed a playoff spot, but we still have to play Florida and add our rivals. And neither of these are guarantees. Because of how well we've been playing, I don't think the Gators will be an issue. But going into the half, they're going to be taking a three-point lead. And the downside of using Alabama is everybody has their best game against you. I mean, recruiting's been fun, but we don't have that underdog mentality. So there's a ton of pressure with each game and we need a third and seven stop. We're going to get the interception with the defensive tackle off of the halfback screen and Jeremiah Alexander takes it back. I was a bit worried because we were trailing when we really shouldn't have. I guess we still need to be worried. They're about to score a touchdown, but at least in this situation, when we do, we get the ball back. I really wish that we were not in so many close matchups, but I don't know why they're pressing our wide receivers. We have so much talent and look at Ari Baggett go. He's taken that to the crib. I told you all that it would be massive for the program if we could land him in recruiting. We should be getting a sack here. I'm going to run up with Moss and this throw is going to be dropped, picked, and it'll all depend if he got his feet in or not. I'm going to hike the ball super quick. I don't want them to have a chance to challenge that. And I guess we'll never know if it was actually an interception or not, but I don't really care because we're going to win this game. This result secures our spot in the SEC championship, but of the 10 guys on our board, half of them still haven't committed who we will all need next year. We're a top four team, so if we win out, we'll probably get a first round bye. And I wish the Iron Bowl was going to be competitive, but it's just not going to be. Auburn's been terrible. By the way, I know the SEC won't have divisions in the future, but you're stuck having them on this.
this game. And since Missouri lost Oklahoma, we're playing the Sooners in the conference championship. Assuming Bryson Carson plays well, he should end up winning the Heisman. And if Kansas State loses, we might even fly up to the number one seed. I'm extremely excited for this game. And that's because it took us until year four to make it here to the SEC championship with Alabama. We have no choice but to win out up to this point though, because we need to win two more national championships. And let me tell you, Giovante Norman has been incredible. With four minutes remaining, I am going to go for it on a fourth and one. And you know who is wide open, Giovante Norman. He has just been that guy. We've taken care of business on the defensive side of the ball and we have limited our turnovers. So that's why we're winning right now. And if Oklahoma were going to come back at this point, it would take a special miracle. There's only two minutes left and they're down by three possessions. So they would have to get an onside kick no matter what. And if the hands team on a 99 overall team can't handle this, that would be a very big problem. I will give them credit. They've had very good run defense, but I don't know if they have the speed to keep up with our top guy. It's over. What a performance from Bryson Carson. And yes, he probably deserved player of the game because he's one of the main reasons we're lifting the SEC trophy. But don't let Giovante Norman's four touchdowns and 197 yards go unnoticed. Obviously, our quarterback won the Heisman. And because he threw for 5,400 yards and 61 touchdowns, he got pretty much every award out there. But that came at a cost as Jamari Hubbard barely ran the ball. It is nice to see six different wide receivers having success though. And 97 overall tackle Tommy Penniston, who we recruited in year one, won the Outland. Our kicker, who we also recruited, Cam Humble, won the Groza. And for the first time, I think we can go into this playoff expecting to dominate. Now, I hate the fact that we might be playing Oklahoma again, but San Diego State has gone into their place and caused chaos. They are going to pick up this fourth and 10, and that'll keep them alive for the time being, but they are still on upset watch. They are down by five with about 30 seconds left, and come on, somebody make a tackle. I'm so nervous for what's going to happen. On fourth and two, they go with the handoff. So Oklahoma's going to stay alive, but they only have six seconds left, and that was almost picked. This crucial one final play decides who we play in the quarterfinals, and Oklahoma's going to score. So I guess we're playing the Sooners in back-to-back -back games. My expectations going into this one is we should crush them, but they also might be really set on getting revenge, which would make that pretty difficult to do. It's definitely been more of a defensive game this time around, but if we could convert here on fourth and goal, I'd say we'd still have control, which we do. Oklahoma's main issue has been now that we know what they do on offense, they have not been hard to stop and that should have been a pick, but we still held them and with about two minutes left, they're still down by two possessions, but it looks like they're about to score. Because they still have all three timeouts, they're not out of it yet, which does make me a little bit nervous, but they're still opting to go for the onside kick, even though they should have just kicked that way back to us. What they're soon going to realize is we have the kicker that won the Groza, so we are in field goal range already, and one more first down seals it, which we are going to pick up. Oklahoma tried, but we're going on to the semifinals, and if we lose, the video is just going to be over. Even if we do win it all this year, I don't know how we're going to do it next season, but we got to take it one step at a time, especially since we're facing off against Ohio State. They ruined last season for us, and trust me, I have not forgotten, but they are a good team like always, so we're going to have to play our best, and I didn't see that blitz coming. With four minutes left in the second quarter, nobody's been able to score yet, but hopefully we can on this drive. And I really don't want a field goal. I want six, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it. That throw was off the marks, but we still caught it. And it wasn't even intended for Hubbard, but what a guy. On the last play of the first half, Ohio State is going to hike it instead of going for the field goal and they score. Devin Brown just threw a dart and just know at one point we were up 14 to zero, but now we're down by four. It's been a very back and forth game, but we have the ball down by three with a couple minutes remaining and Hubbard's amazing. I don't know how we avoid so many tackles there, but all we need is a field goal at least to send this thing to overtime. And remember, this is a must-win game, so we've got to figure it out. The corner route's dusting them. And I never expected to be utilizing so many of our young wide receivers at this point in the dynasty, but we are, and this ball is going to be underthrown. That was almost intercepted, which would have changed everything, but instead, I'm going to go right back to the wheel route, and we have a touchdown. If Ohio State manages to score at this point, I would be so upset. Why are they running? And I guess that's put them in a decent position for a Hail Mary, but Devin Brown is doing it again. This time, he's going to truck us and get down to the 35. And I'm starting to get real concerned that they're about to score. This is the final play of the game. Please make a tackle. And thank goodness we are headed back to the championship. Once again, Bryson Carson put up amazing stats. And I really don't want to face either of these teams. It seems like it is going to be Georgia. It's fourth and seven and Penn State is going to convert on it and fall short. So they're about where they need to be, but they need at least another yard or two. And on this play, they're going to not get it. I think it's going to end up going to overtime, but it'll all depend what they do in the final eight seconds. And I didn't get to see what happened after regulation, but Georgia threw an interception. So the national championship is set. We seem to be off to a good start so far. We've had a couple of big plays and I'm gonna go for one more to the end zone to hail. But even though he was stopped short, we should be able to just punch it in. From what I'm seeing early on, Penn State is being careless with the ball. We've already forced them into an interception, which set us up for this. And no matter how good of a start we get off to, I refuse to get excited because I know it can all crumble. That sign Bryce Young football is on the line and I really don't wanna have to give it away. Here on third and five, we are gonna get the stop. So I'm much happier with
withholding them the three than giving up a touchdown. And normally I can't pass in the rain on this game, but here in the first quarter, we're dominating. My only hope is this halfback screen works on third and six. I dump it off to Richard Young and he gets down to the two, but that's going to be the end of the first quarter. And we're starting off the second controversial with the halfback toss to the fastest player on the field. I honestly don't know what we would do without Jamari Hubbard. Here on third and six, we get the sack and I am so happy with how it's going so far. Ideally, I would love for this to be the final drive of the half, but it's not going to be. And luckily enough, we held the Nittany Lions to another field goal. I think the positives far outweighed the negative in the first half. And in the second, our goal is to burn through as much clock as we can on each of these drives. We're the favorites, so we shouldn't be playing this passively, but you know what? That's what I'm going to do anyway. Hubbard has been amazing and Jamari Hubbard just got the first. This dude will be back on the team as well next year because he is only a junior. And we had so many touchdowns on the play, so the fact that he missed that throw is frustrating. I honestly don't even want to settle with the field goal. I want to go with the fake and I think it's going to work. Please hold on to this ball, Young. And on fourth and 11, it feels like they've given up. They're not even in a big hurry up mode at this point and we make the tackle. It's taken four years, but we've won number two and Nick Saban's so close to retiring, but he's got one more season left in him and we need to make sure that we win a national championship next year. That was a tough couple games to get to that title game, but Nick Saban broke his record again and Bryson Carson set an NCAA record. Stat-wise, his junior year with us was better than his freshman and sophomore year combined and we have nine juniors, including him, declaring early for the draft, so we'll see how many of them I can convince to stay. We're also losing about another eight guys because they're seniors, including 98 overall Antonio Kite, and the ones that are projected for like the fifth round, we'll just tell them to get their college degree. The real issue came on these guys projected for the first round is they won't budge, but I promised cornerback Devin Emerson that we're going to win a national title again and that he needs his college degree, and since that's still not enough, we're going to also say he'll be a first round draft pick. The same thing worked for 93 overall middle linebacker Jeremy Montalis, and yes, we lost a lot of talent to the NFL, but hopefully enough guys stayed around that we can still compete for a championship. I I doubt I'm going to be able to land all three of these guys, but I will try my best. And we got two of them, but our recruiting class was ranked all the way down here because even though some of these players are really good, there's only nine total of them that are coming to Alabama. If we couldn't move some of these linebackers to our defensive line, it would have been completely depleted. But yes, at 223 pounds, Calvin Phillips is playing defensive tackle. And with training results, he got up to a 98 overall. So we're going to be in some good hands. These overalls are even better than last year somehow. And I completely forgot we had Dylan Lonergan, who is a 95. He also has an insane receiving core of targets, and yes, that includes a tight end. With all 91 pluses on the offensive line, he should have plenty of time in the pocket. And as I'm scrolling through the defense, I don't think I've ever seen this many 90 plus players on a team. We're going to be great. My only concern is our quarterback has no experience, but we'll see how it turns out. And I will definitely be adapting this playbook to fit his style much better. At this point in the dynasty, it's nice to know that the SEC is the number one conference, and I'm proud to say that we're supposed to be the number one team this season. Our first matchup is college game day against West Virginia and we are going to win by 18. But next up is number 16 UK and we have to travel on the road to play at Kroger Field. It's not often that my favorite team is normally this good so I thought we might as well play them. And we also get to use Dylan Lonergan for the first time. He definitely won't be as good as Bryson Carson but he seems to be pretty solid so far. And I don't know what it is but Giovante Norman is just amazing. He has three touchdowns out of the slot. So even though our defense is probably about to give up another touchdown here we are going to get the win. But there's still a very long season ahead so we're going to have to keep this level of play up. I feel like we are are in good hands, but next on our schedule is none other than number two, Missouri. With them also being good on this dynasty file, the SEC has been miserable, and they already scored a touchdown, so we need to respond back with one of our own. We're in the red zone, and I waited enough just to find Davis. The junior wide receiver didn't see the field much until this year, but because of all the work he put into the offseason, it is well-deserved, so hopefully he can help us reach the end zone before the end of the first half. That route from him is filthy, and he's gonna get down to the end zone. I didn't think he was gonna fight his way in, but he decided to take both of the Missouri safeties out at the same time. And I'm a little concerned that Richard Young is in the game right now. That means our starting halfback is injured. So I wish that Jamari Hubbard could just stay healthy, but he's 5'7", so it is expected and we're going to score again. It seems like every week we have a different wide receiver that goes off. On this corner route, we're going to find our tight end. And man, I know last year we probably had a better offense, but this team is insane. We've almost doubled the score versus the number two school in the country. And I'm glad that we didn't lose to Missouri this year. Dylan Lonergan is also playing amazing. So even though in the next four weeks we have two top four matchups. I'm feeling very confident in this team to get wins. And since Notre Dame is coming off of a loss, that makes me feel even better about this blowout. Somehow senior cornerback Devin Emerson had two pick sixes in this game. And I'm so glad I was able to convince him to come back for his senior year because he's made us even better. Going into week seven, we're still sitting up here at number one, but Georgia's number three. And the Bulldogs have a quarterback in the Heisman race, but so is Dylan Lonergan. Since this is the final year of the dynasty and Auburn seems like they're finally going to be good, I'm going to have to sim. But I trust this team to get the right result against Georgia.
Georgia and we go out and lose in overtime. That loss stings a lot, but I'm sure we're going to climb back up the polls and we're going to have four matchups beforehand, but I'm going to sim straight to the Auburn game so we can just get to that. If we lose to Chattanooga at this point, Nick Saban might as well just retire, but we get the win obviously and against LSU, we also pound them. He is the GOAT of college football, so I want to help him end his career in the right way. And going into week 14, Georgia's coming off a loss to Kentucky, so we're sitting up here at number three. Unfortunately, no matter what, they're going to win our division, and it looks like both of our quarterbacks dropped out of the Heisman race. But now we get to play against our biggest rivals, and beating Auburn in the Iron Bowl will make us feel a lot better. Assuming we win this game, we would have a first round bye in the college football playoffs. I'm going to take the drag to Baguette, and he can't fight in. But this is why we have little 5'7 Jamari Hubbard, who is just so much faster than everyone else. Ideally, if it's possible, I would love to beat Auburn by like 50, and I love that we're already talking trash over their players. The only reason we can do that is because we're going to have a 21-point lead before the end of the first quarter, and in the end, we're not going to quite reach 50. We're only going to put up 38, but we still blew them out. Jamari Hubbard definitely had himself a game, but I'm a little worried that if none of these four teams lose their conference championship, we're not going to get a first-round bye. We'll see how it plays out as the Kansas State quarterback wins the Heisman, and Jamari Hubbard won the Doak Walker Award. He had his best season yet, rushing for over a 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns, but receiving wise due to injuries, Javante Norman was very disappointing. At quarterback, Dylan Lonergan did a pretty good job at running the offense, and 97 overall center Miles McVay won the Outland and the Remington. Last year, we had our kicker win an award, and this year, our punter did the same thing. So I'm hoping with all of that, we are inside the top four, and it looks like we are right above Georgia. This doesn't make any sense considering they beat us and they won the SEC championship, but if Kentucky can't beat them again, we're gonna have to play them anyways. And instead of kicking a field goal, they're going for it on fourth and 10 with a tie game, which was a terrible decision. Because of that, Georgia's going to go on to win the game with this field goal, and we're going to have to play them in the quarterfinals. I was surprised that USF and Rutgers made it, but both of them lost already, and it's time to find out who really runs the SEC. On our first drive, I'm going to take things very slowly. We're going to take that out route, and there's no way that he just played that. Obviously, that is not the start that you want to see. On third and 10, they're going to go to their tight end. He's going to throw us off of him, and I am so tired of having to try and beat Georgia. They are insane on NCAA football. I'm going to have to scramble for our first down here, which I'm glad we got. But I'd love to get seven here, and it looks like they were pressing our wide receivers. I don't know why they thought they could stop Mason Davis, but that's a touchdown. And on a fourth and one near the end of the first quarter, I feel like we should be able to pick up the halfback toss. We have the speed with Hubbard, and he gets it. With how well he can play sometimes, we really don't have any excuses. That is a laser to Jalen Hale. And here on third and 14, I'm hoping we can get the stop. They went with four verticals, and nothing is open. I find it really interesting that Georgia is pressing us after they already gave up a touchdown to Davis. He's going to burn that corner again, and I don't know where Mason Davis came from. I had not paid enough attention evidently because he has been amazing until he did not catch that ball. Since that turnover, we've given up 14 straight, and on the option run, I made the wrong read. Dylan Lonergan, please bounce on top of that. What an embarrassing ending to the second quarter for us. Please, somebody make a tackle. Do not tell me he's about to toast us for six. Come on, Smith. I swear, if you cannot catch him, it's all... You just... I want to give up. When we were in the red zone, about to go up 21-7, to I thought we were cooking, but we have given up 21 straight, at least I'm going to find Javante Norman and he makes an appearance, but Georgia could end Nick Saban's career right now. He would go out with a loss and Devin Emerson is not going to make a play on that ball. You've got to be kidding. He is a 96 overall corner, but he just wasn't able to do anything there. I did use her that comeback route well, and they make the drop. You know what? If we could get a stop here on third and six, we're not going to be in the worst of positions, but Dan Mayers just threw a laser. And after a holding penalty, it is second and 19. They decided to press Mike Davis again. This time he goes up for the 50-50 ball. He is toasting this corner and I'll feed him the ball all day if I need to. They really don't learn. I think they have a different guy out there on him. This time we're going to see, and it's number 30 again. Nope, it's the same player, and he can't do a thing. The real question, though, is can we get a defensive stop, and there's no way we just got trucked by their quarterback, and he breaks a bunch. Dan Mayer's got his team in field goal range, so they're going to go up 10, but not all hope is gone. There's still about four minutes left, and Javante Norman's going to get some incredible blocks here. Just got to beat one more, and even though we couldn't, we are not in a terrible position. This looks like it's cover two, and I'm going to go up the seam, and it's caught. The real question will end up being if we're able to get a stop on defense or not. And since it's third and 13, I'd like to say that we will, but we're in a tough position. They're going to bomb us over the top. And how did our safety just get toasted? He was the deep third over the middle, and he just decided to run away from the wide receiver streaking by him. So now we urgently need to score, and I don't think I'm going to see anything open. Maybe we can throw it to the slant. You know what? Jalen Hill does have some speed, and we got a couple blocks there as well. This game has been an offensive shootout. I'm going to throw this to Mason Davis no matter what. He makes the catch, and I probably probably should just go right back to him where he is going to get into the end zone. I guess not. He was marked a little bit short, so we're going to have to score here. I'm going to go to our quick little halfback, and it's all going to come down to if we can stop Georgia one more time. Well, we've gotten him to a third and 12, but the question is, how much time will we really have? 
I let the clock run after the first down play, but now we're down to about 29 seconds left. We only had two timeouts, so I'm just glad we're getting the ball back. That is better than nothing. We have a chance, and look at Norman go. The one thing I have to make sure we do is we don't get tackled inbounds. I have to get out no matter what, and we can also pick up a first down, I guess. That would also stop the clock, but it is very risky. I'll give it one more go just because I would love to avoid overtime. We have the seam up the middle. Norman catches it, but there's three seconds left, and this is way too risky. Man-to-man -man coverage over there. Davis, hold on. We have escaped with the win on the final play and my adrenaline was just rushing there. I should have settled for three. If I could redo that, I wouldn't even go for it. But I guess we should figure out who our next opponent is. And unfortunately, it's going to be number one seed Florida State who is undefeated. Beating them will not be easy, that's for sure. But we do have an eight overall advantage. And after that last ending, we are riding a wave of momentum. There's been so many close finishes in this one video. I honestly can't even believe it. I'm waiting in the pocket though. And that was the smart decision. Baggett is going to break free and go to the house. Because of what happened against Georgia, teams are not willing to press Mason Davis, so we're just going to have to take our slants instead, and that's going just as well. It might take us a lot longer to score, but we have more control, and here on third and goal, we're going to need about 10 yards, but I am going to take the wrong read. Ever since that moment, no one has been able to score. It is 10 to 3. We're getting the sack, and Florida State only has 109 total yards of offense. I'm trying to end the first half getting us onto the board. I'm going to take this deep crossing route, and the safety is not going to play it on Richard Young, which is crazy because that's our backup halfback. What a performance from him. Now we're going to go to the third stringer, Justice Haynes. And remember when he was our starter at one point, he is still amazing, breaking free for six. And compared to the Georgia game, this one is going much smoother for us. We have everything boxed in man coverage. We're going to get the tackle before the first. And I refuse to believe that Florida State is taking a field goal here. They must not realize how much time is left because we can focus on draining the clock. And the undefeated Seminoles are struggling. We're about to give them their first loss. So I'm feeling pretty good about our chance of winning it all. We even force a fumble, but we can't land on it. But I don't care. We got the result we wanted. And it's crazy Dylan Lonergan was on our bench this entire time. He was clearly good enough to get us to this point, and his final collegiate game ever is going to end up being against number three USC, who is the three seed in the playoffs. They have one loss just like us, and it was to Oregon, who didn't seem to have a great season. And we're about to find out if I'm giving away that Bryce Young football or not. Unfortunately, USC scored on their first drive, so we have to respond back. And here on third and five, they're going with the pass. We're going to have that dump off underneath all locked up. My hope is that Jamari Hubbard doesn't get hurt throughout this entire game. He has a problem with getting injured because of how tiny he is, and I think he's going to make a major impact. So we have to make sure that he stays healthy here on second and 14 because that run went so far backwards. I'm just going to take the check down. And now on third and six, I have the slant that I want to throw to, but it doesn't get open. So I think we're going to get held to three, which would be very unfortunate. Hang on. Jalen Hale just made one of the best plays we've had. And by midway through the third quarter, we have a 16 point lead, but Tyler Coco is going to take off and I was not prepared. I'm a little surprised they didn't take their extra point. We're going to hit Tyler Coco hard and he bounced up from that. You've got to be kidding. There's nobody even near him. We're not going to be able to catch the quarterback. Back-to-back -back terrible plays from us. And to make matters worse, guess who got hurt on our last drive? Jamari Hubbard with a foot stress fracture is out for the game. And since we've stopped being able to score and we have to stop this guy named Adrian Peterson, come on, bring him down. A. Peterson, this is just a joke at this point. Someone. Evidently his name's Amarian Peterson, but you're witnessing the collapse of a century live and Tyler Coco. Of course this dude gets free. I am embarrassed that going into the fourth quarter, we are going to be trailing. And I'm still not 100% sure how it happened. It just seems so quick. All of a sudden we're down and now I am running the option, but my running back is back here at quarterback. Richard Young is going to break free. I did not think we were going to slip out of that. I'm not sure why he was set to pass the ball. Do a little stiff arm or not. You were too tired to extend your arm, so we'll just have to get in here instead. Here on third and seven, I'm hoping that we're able to stop USC. Hold them to a field goal. We just need to make a tackle here and that means we should have the final drive of the game, which is pretty good. All we're going to need is a field goal, which shouldn't be too difficult to get, especially because Norman gets us to about the 35 and I'm not 100% sure what we're drawing up here. I had a little bit of a play action in there and I see Mason Davis deep. He somehow toasted the corner on him. We're just going to run down to about the 10 and I'm hoping that the computer will let me run out the rest of the clock from here. It seems like they have negative IQ because nobody's taking a timeout and I had to play it smart at the end because we were about to blow our lead but I have completed the challenge. You probably never thought you would see an Alabama rebuild but Nick Saban retires with three more national championships and that gives him 10 total all time securing his position even farther as the GOAT of college football. Those three titles were not easy to come by. And if you were wondering where players got drafted on that last team, we had eight first round picks and then another bunch of guys that ended up going in later rounds of the NFL draft. Anyways, if you enjoyed this rebuild, I think you'd like this Penn State one as well. And if you want to see where all of my rebuilds are, you can find them in this playlist.